Lately I've been working in a lot of problems where I need to find if a particular number is a power of two. And this is not a very difficult problem, but I just found a very interesting way to do this. So I, I, I thought it would be nice to share it. So first, what do we mean if a number m is a power of two? Well, what we want to find is uh, if a number m is equal to two to the n, where n is a natural number, right? So for example, if m is equal to four, we know that this is a power of two because two to the two is equal to four and this two here belongs to the natural numbers. But if we have, for example, m equal to three, then this is not a power of two because uh, two to the n equal to three, there's no n that belongs to the natural numbers that will give us three. Again, this is not a very difficult problem to, to code, right? Uh, the easiest way to do this is to take this expression, right? So two to the n equal to m, and then just take the logarithm base two on each side, and then we get n equal to log two of m. And if this result belongs to the natural numbers, then we'll know that m is a power of two. So for example, in Python, what we do is uh, from a library like math, first import the log two function, and then we can define our function is power of two, right? And it takes as a, as an input, a number m. And now all we need to do is um, write a conditional, right? So if the log two of the number m is an integer. So in Python, numbers have this method that even if this returns, let's say a float, you can uh, find if it's an integer or not. So, so if this holds true, then uh, we just need to return true. Otherwise, we just return false, right? So uh, what I mean by numbers having this method is, you know, if I take, for example, a number 2.001 and I ask if it's an integer, well, I'm gonna get uh, false, but if the, I, I write down 2.000, even though this is a float, it will tell me that it is in fact an integer. Uh, so, so if we take our function, right, and now we pass the number one, well, this is a power of two because two to the zero is one, uh, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, so, so four will be true. But if we pass, for example, the number three, it will be false, right? So again, this is not very difficult, but for example, in Python here, we have to import a function from another library. So the question is, is there another way to do this? So let's take again the number m and let's write a, a list of, of numbers. And now let's, let's look at this number in binary, right? So let's take the binary version of this number and let's write those down. Let's, let's write down just the ones that are powers of two. So let, let's write down here, are these numbers power of two? So we're gonna say, well, one is true, right? Two is true, four is true, and eight is true, right? So here, I'm gonna write them here on the side. So two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. So what are these numbers in binary? Well, this is, let's write it for four digits so we can express up to number eight. So zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, and then one, zero, zero, zero. So what we can see here is that all the numbers that are powers of two only have one one in their binary representation. So one thing we can do is, you know, convert our number m to binary and count the number of ones, right? So that's that's one way we can do this, but this can get really complicated, right? If we convert this to, let's say, a binary string, we will have to iterate through the string and, and find the ones. 
We could also just add the digits and see if they're equal to one, but that's also kind of complicated. But uh, an interesting thing is that if we look at the number that comes right before the power of two, let's, let's look at, for example, the number seven, we can see that this number is zero, one, one, one. So if we see here, uh, this has ones where the number eight has zeros and a zero where the number eight has a one. So if we perform a bitwise and operation, so let's do that here. So zero, one, 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 and one, zero, 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 and perform bitwise and, well, we're gonna get zeros everywhere. And the interesting thing is that this only holds true for numbers that are powers of two. So only numbers that are powers of two are preceded by numbers that when you perform this and operation, they always give you zero. So for example, here, the number three is zero, zero, one, one. If I perform the and operation with four, which is a power of two, I get always zeros. Now, if I look at the number five, right, that's zero, one, zero, one. If I were to perform the and operation with the number that precedes it, so four, we see here that they share a one here, so it won't give me all zeros. So that's an interesting way to find if a, a number is a power of two. You do a bitwise and operation with the number that precedes it and see if you get a zero. Now, here's the cool thing. In most programming languages like Python, C++, Java, Julia, if you perform the and operation with the integer or the float without having to convert it first to binary, it performs the bitwise and operation in the binary version of it. So, so let's take a look at that. So let's define a new function and let's just call it the same. So let's define um, is part of two. But now what we're gonna do is check um, with a conditional if, if our number m and the number m minus one is equal to zero. And th if this is true, we're gonna return true, right? Otherwise, we're just gonna return false. And here we can see that if we perform this on the number two, we get true, on the number three, we get false, on the number four, we get true. So, you know, we can write a um, little for loop uh, for numbers, uh, from let's say one to two to the 10, right? And let's see if that number is a power of two. Let's uh, print the number, right? And here we'll see that um, that's gonna print the numbers um, from one to uh, 1024 that are powers of two, right? Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if I were to pass to this function um, something that is not a natural number, so for example, the number zero, then uh, this returns true. So it's because it's comparing the number zero with the number minus one. And when it does that operation, you get all zeros. So we do need to add a conditional here to make sure that we only evaluate numbers that are greater than zero. So we just need to add if m greater than zero, and that's when we're going to evaluate this. Otherwise, it's just going to return false, right? So now if I if I uh, evaluate zero, I get false. If I evaluate minus one, I get false. Now this was also the case for uh, when we were using this log two function, but in that case, because the log two of let's say zero is not defined, we're gonna get an error, right? Uh, so if I rerun this this here and then evaluate zero, that gives me an error saying that uh, it's out of the, the domain of the function, right? So we would have to also um, implement that conditional here to guarantee that we're not gonna be evaluating something that is not possible. Uh, so now it returns false. So that's it. So I thought this was very interesting. So I thought it would be nice to share it.